You are watching TFI. Indeed, how to install Vault Basic 2020. We're going all the way through, start to finish, from downloading the files all the way through to configuring Autodesk Inventor to connect to the Vault. So a few assumptions are going to be made here. First off is that you're going to be a home user working on your own or in a very small office with a couple of other people at max. Uh, there's no servers involved here. It's all worked on a Windows 10 desktop operating system. And uh, we're coming from a standpoint of configuring it with Autodesk Inventor uh, 2020. Right, so let's get cracking. Uh, you need to get the download files, mate. So I don't know where you're gonna get them from. If you're a genuine customer or if you, you download them off the torrents, I don't know. Either way, I'm assuming you're a proper customer. If you are, you gotta go over to your Autodesk account, which is manage.autodesk.com, sign in. Go to the product that you get Vault Basic with. So, for example, Inventor Professional, click View Downloads, and then you'll see in here Vault Basic Client, Vault Basic Server. Make sure that's at 2020, and then switch the download method to Browser Download, and then click, and then click, and then that'll start a download to executables. Once they're downloaded, uh, you'll see these two files here VBC, that's Vault Basic Client 2020, VBS Vault Basic Server 2020. You want to double click each one of these, one at a time. Click OK, and then it'll extract into this directory here, C Autodesk. Just leave that as default. Once it's finished extracting the first one, double-click the next one. Once it's all done, head on over to C Autodesk, and you'll have two folders of the same name, VBC 2020 and VBS 2020. And inside here are the installation files, which we'll come back to in a short second. A couple of other things we need to do for setup. It's unavoidable, mate. It's Vault. It has to be set up properly. So we're going to go over to the Task Manager and then go to performance and then just make a note just take a mental note of how many cores the system has that you've got so i've got four next up go over to the control panel of your computer right so you want to go to control panel go to uninstall a program and then click turn windows features on or off up here at the left and you want to just expand this box a little bit and we need to enable some windows features which you probably don't have enabled at the moment i've got them already installed so you're just gonna to have to copy the tick boxes that i've got ticked underneath .NET Framework 4.7, so take ASP.NET 4.7, and uh, I don't think we need any of those. And then you want to go down to Internet Information Services, this one here, expand that, go into Web Management Tools, and then you want to take all of these boxes that I've got ticked here, all right, just copy that underneath World Wide Web Services, right, just copy all of these ticky boxes here, copy those, copy that, copy that, and then copy that. This is also assuming that you don't have anything else in your system that requires IIS. If that's the case, don't untick any boxes that you've already got ticked. Just copy the ticky boxes that I've got. And then click OK, and it'll start to install those features. It might ask you for your Windows Media. If that's the case, can't help you there, mate. You'll have to go and get your USB stick or whatever it is you used to install Windows 10 with or re-download it from the, uh, the Microsoft website. Right, once those features are installed, you want to go back on over to your file explorer, Windows Explorer, whatever you want to call it, my computer, and then you want to go to your C drive, uh, and I'm I'm installing all of the Vault components, everything that Vault needs to the C drive. Now, in most cases, in a corporate environment, for example, I would normally install the Vault components to a separate drive, like the D drive or the E drive, but I can't assume that everyone's got that, so we're just going to keep everything on the C drive, and then we're going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this Vault Data. And then I'm going to right click on that and go to properties. This is completely optional, but it, it could save you bacon in the future. Go to customize, change icon, and then scroll to the right and find the icon that looks like a little no entry sign, that one there. Just click OK and then OK on that. And that just flags the folder with a little picture that it's like a mental note to say, don't ever touch this folder in the future. Don't delete it. All right. And then we'll click new folder again and then type in dollar working folder with capital W, capital F and then go save again, right click on that, go to properties, go to customize, change icon, and then just change that to the little hard disk symbol, something like that. Once that's done, uh, we're gonna go to the Vault Data folder, then we're gonna create two new folders. One of them is gonna be called Vault SQL, click return, and then new folder, and we're gonna call this File Stores. Once that's done, we're gonna go over to the C drive, C Autodesk, and then into VBS 2020, Go into third party, go into SQL 2017 Express Advanced X64, setup.exe, right click on that and run as administrator. So this is going to install 2017 Express, but we're doing it separately. So you're going to click the installation link on the left, click new SQL server standalone installation, click that hyperlink there and it'll start the installation wizard for SQL server. Click accept the license terms, click next. It'll run a few checks, everything should be fine. It should give you a warning about having a, the, the Windows firewall enabled probably, uh, which reminds me actually, before we go any further, 
disable any antivirus software that you've got going. So for example, I've got Bitdefender installed on this system. Just go into whatever it is that you use and then uncheck anything that's threat detection, ransomware, remediation, anything like that. Uh, leave the firewall on, that's not going to interfere with anything. Uh, untick vulnerability and then just turn off the antivirus until system restart, for example, for me. Uh, just so it doesn't block anything. Once that's done, click next and then we're going to start to configure the SQL instance. So this is very specific to Vault 2020 because it comes with a unique uh, version of SQL Server, which won't be the same as previous versions if you're following along in a previous version. Uh, but we're going to untick machine learning services. We don't need that. All we need is the full text ticky box and SQL Server application, which to be honest, we don't need that either, but uh, it does install that by default. So we're just going to leave that ticked, leave all of these ticked as well. At the bottom where it says instance root directory, click the three little dots here, and then you want to change this folder to the vault data folder that were created before. So we're going to expand vault data and then select vault SQL and then click OK and then click next. Right, so these bits are really important, right? For the named instance, you want to delete that, turn on caps lock, and you want to type in Autodesk Vault, all uppercase, all one word. Press tab on the keyboard and it should change the instance ID automatically to Autodesk Vault and then click next. Right, press caps lock again just to turn that off. And then this bit is very important. If you don't do this, the installation will fail. On account name next to SQL Server Database Engine, you want to change this by dropping down the arrow and then selecting browse. In the enter the object name to select area, right, you want to type in network and then select check names and then select network service and then press OK and then OK and then click next. If you don't do that, the whole installation will topple over. Right, for the next bit, authentication mode, you want to select mixed mode and then enter password. I'll put it on screen because it's quite long. It's Autodesk Vault with a capital A, capital V at 26200. And then again, down here, just to confirm the password, Autodesk Vault at 26200. This next bit is completely optional, but it is best practice. We would normally do this in an enterprise environment for a server, but when you're using Vault on your home desktop, it consumes a bit of disk space that you might not want to do. So if, you, if, you've, if you're tight on disk space, don't do this bit. But if you've got oodles, amples of disk space, like hundreds of gigabytes there, that's absolutely fine. But you want to go to temp DB, and this is where we're referring back to the number of cores. So I had four cores, and what you want to do is halve the number of cores that your system's got. So for me, it's going to be two. If you had six cores, you want to put in three here. Uh, the initial size, uh, you want to change this to 1024 and then auto growth change this to 100 and then uh, for the temp db log file you want to change the initial size of the combined number of log files so i've got two log files of 1024 megabytes so my initial log file is going to be 2048 and the auto growth, we're going to change that as well to 100 megabytes and then click next. So this bit is completely optional. If that just seemed like a load of hard work and you can't be bothered to do sums, you don't have to do that bit at all. After the server configuration, you can just click next uh, and then just click yes on this message. And it'll go ahead and install SQL Server 2017. Now, this might take a few minutes, so I'm just going to obviously fast forward and then crack on with the next bit. But you free to pause the video and wait for yours to finish. Here we are all being well. You should see a whole bunch of green ticks means that everything's all good. Click close on that. Minimize whatever you've got open. You can close that down now. And then you can hop on over to the C drive, go to the Autodesk folder again, go back into VBS 2020. And then in there you should have a setup.exe with an Autodesk icon. Right click on that and then run as administrator. So this is us installing the Vault server component now. Click install on this dialog box. And then on the next page, accept the license agreement. If you want to read that, by all means, fill your boots. And then uh, expand this little arrow underneath here. And you should see local database instance Autodesk Vault already exists, which it does because we've just done done that and then everything else we'll just leave as default minimize that and then it'll go and check that sql is connected providing that that box closes up everything's good and then uh, just leave the installation path as default and click install and it's going to say an existing database has been detected that's fine just click yes on that and it's going to do the adms check now, now this is the bit where it, it should skip straight past this but if there's anything wrong with your system it'll flag it up at this point and mine's probably not going to give me any errors because i'm pretty sure this is this is all fine if you if you do get a dialog box with the uh, the pre-check errors what you're gonna have to do mate is just google whichever error it gives you and then try and fix it but as you can see mine skip past it 
and is proceeding with the rest of the, uh, the the components. So I'll pick this up once it's done. And there we are. That's done, mate. Right. You want to click finish on that, and then click run. Just click run later. I, just, I don't for some reason I just don't like starting it straight away. I just prefer to close that down. I think we're good to fire up the vault console. Right. You want to right click on the icon on the desktop and then click run as administrator. And I'm providing that everything's rosy in the garden. It should give you this, uh, there's no vaults on the server, do you want to create one now? Click yes on that, and then it's going to ask you to log in. So currently the administrator account for vault doesn't have a password, so just click OK, leave the password as blank. And we've now got the create vault pop-up. So for the new vault name, call this your company name, call it your department name, whatever, right? This is going to stick. You, can, you can't easily rename vaults actually. Uh, so whatever name you name this, you're going to be stuck with it for a while. So I'm going to call this TFI as per the channel name. And for the file store location, you want to click this little option here. Click the three little dots. And then when you go back on over to your C drive, back on over to the Vault Data folder, and then select the file stores folder underneath Vault Data. Click OK, and then click OK again. It'll go off and create your vault for you. Once it's done, it randomly pops up a little message at the top left for some reason, which can fly behind anything else you've got open. So... Uh, you just want to make sure everything's minimized when you do this because you might be waiting a while with that box in the background. Click OK on that. So there's a few other set of things that we're going to need to do. And first off is to install the Vault client. So you want to go back on over to the root of your C drive. So over to C, back into Autodesk, and then you want to go to VBC 2020. This is the Vault Basic client. Right click on setup.exe and then run as administrator. So it's a very similar setup. This one is very, very simple. It's just all next, next, next. Click install. Again, you can read the license thing if you've got more time than me. Click next on that. And then underneath Vault Basic Client, just expand that. Go to custom. Uh, if you want to keep the auto loader, you can do. But just make sure that any CAD programs that you've got installed, like the likes of AutoCAD and Inventor, make sure the add-ins are ticked here. And uh, put that back up. And then, uh, yeah, the rest of them, we don't need those. Click install and it'll go away and install Vault Basic Client for you, mate. So I'll pick this up once it's done. And uh, if you get a little prompt like this to say the following programs should be closed before continuing the install, uh, you're fine to just click do not close the applications and a reboot will be required. Just just do that. It's fine. It's not going to cause any damage at all. And that's that bit done. Re click finish on that dialog box. Uh, yeah, I know we need to do a reboot, but it'll work. It'll work. You don't have to do that right now. You can do that at your leisure. Right click no on that. Uh, head back on over to the Autodesk Data Management Server Console, ADMS for short. And then I said we're going to set this up correctly, so there's a few other things that we need to do. So you want to go to Tools, and then go to Administration, and then go to Manage Users. So we need to create a couple of users, mate. So first off, the Administrator. This is God. This is the account that can do absolutely everything and delete the vault. So you want to make sure that there's a password on this. So you want to right-click on that, go to Edit, and then just set a password in here. It could be absolutely anything, but obviously make sure you can remember it because if you forget your administrator password, you're kind of screwed, mate. Uh, click OK, and then you want to click New User. And uh, you, I mean, you can use the vault as the administrator account. It's just not really recommended. So for me, I'm just going to put in my name, uh, uh, first name, last name, and username. This can be absolutely anything. Again, you can have it the same as your Windows login, uh, you know, something like that, or you can have it like that, whatever. It doesn't matter. That can be changed quite easily later on. And then again, put in a password. And then underneath the roles, uh, if it's just you using it, just give yourself a full administrator roles. It's fine. If you're if you're giving user access to somebody else in your office, you can give them document editor rights, and you can you, you can see what the roles are somewhere else in Vault. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, go to Vaults, tick the vault that you've just created, and then click OK. And then that's the user created. You can continue to do that as many times as you want. Just be a little bit careful with how many users you do create and who you create them for, because what you can't do is delete users. Uh, that's something that Autodesk seem very stubborn with not letting people to do. Right, underneath roles and permissions, if you've got manage roles, uh, you can go into the likes of document editor and then double click that and you'll be able to see what that that role can do. So that's all of these things on the right hand side here. If you're a document editor, you can read files, move files, create files, that kind of stuff. So I'll let you read through that in your own time. Right, underneath advanced settings, uh, you want to go to paging and then change the page size to 1000 and then close that down. And then uh, because we've changed the administrator password, it's going to ask us to log back in uh, with the uh, with the password that I set earlier. So just do that. And uh, I think we're ready to log in to the vault now, mate. And uh, you want to go over to your desktop, go to the vault icon that should be installed, Vault Basic 2020. Double click that. You're gonna you're probably gonna get confused between the two icons because they look pretty much identical, but just separate them out so you know which one's which. 
and then log in as you if you've got full administrator rights on the account you've created you can log in as you all uh, right so the server is going to be local host if you've installed vault on another pc another laptop or a server then you have to type in the name of that server here but if you've installed it on the pc you're working on now leave that as local host and to make sure everything's rosy click this little three dots button here it'll scan your pc look for a vault providing that it's found it and everything's working you should get a pop-up box and it says the name of the vault we created earlier click ok take this for automatically login next session and then click ok and that'll take you in a vault mate and we are almost there so there's just a couple of other things that we need to do to get it set up and working with autodesk inventor on the left hand side is i'm not going to do a full vault training course this is just installation but on the left hand side this is your folder structure so we need to create a folder structure for you to put inventor files in and even autocad files if you want to do that as well so right click on vault explorer dollar and then click new folder and then we'll call this engineering data and then press return right click again on the dollar folder new library folder this time and call this content center files and then right click again new library folder and we'll just call this libraries all right once that's done you want to go to tools in vault client go to administration go to vault settings and then in the working folder area where it says define working folder options click define and then enforce consisting working folder for all clients click the three little dots go to c and then select the dollar working folder folder that were created earlier on select that folder and then click ok we're going to come back to here in a second as well and then tick enforce unique file names as well and then click close and then this bit's a little bit random what you've got to do is go to file log out and then log back in and that enforces this setting that we've just enabled uh, without doing this uh, something goes wrong i'll not go through, i'll not go into it but we'll just need to do that right and then once that's done once you log back in we're going to right click on each of these folders and then go to working folder uh, so do it on the content center files do it on engineering data and then do it on libraries and that what, what that does is it goes to the dollar working folder and it creates these three folders in your workspace we could type these out manually but it's just easier to do that and a lot quicker uh, all right once that's done i'm just trying to think out loud there's quite a few steps here obviously right we're going to go over to inventor mate we're going to set up inventor and get that hooked in so go to your inventor icon double click that and launch inventor all right once inventor is opened up click the vault icon the vault tab at the top which should be there if you uh, installed vault basic client correctly before click login uh, it should remember your account credentials from logging into the vault client put in your password uh, make sure local host and your vault is correct automatically log in next session and then click ok once that's done it's done it correctly the log out button should become active go to the get started tab go, go to projects uh, and then that, you, you won't get that and then go to new at the bottom we're going to click new vault project next and then for the name right again this is something that's going to stick for a while so give the project something that you recognize uh, and it's only there's only going to be one so best to just call it your company name or the same as the vault and then click the three little buttons here and then go to your c drive go to the dollar working folder and then okay on that just drop it straight into the root of dollar working folder click finish and then we're going to configure some settings in the uh, the options down below so we're going to go to workspace click that single left click and then select this little browse button here and you want to browse to the dollar working folder and then engineering data folder and click ok on that and it should change it to a dot backslash engineering data which is a relative folder All right once that's done right click on libraries add path again browse go back to the c dollar working folder and then select libraries and then okay on that left click out of it so it confirms the path underneath folder options you want to go to content center files left click on that again browse and then go back to the c drive i know this is quite fiddly but it is just a one-off thing and then content center files okay and then left click on that as well and then that's it all set up right just make sure your appearance libraries i like to change the appearance library to the autodesk one and i like to change the material library to the autodesk one as well they're just more they're just richer with content click save click done and then go to vault go to the access drop down go to map folders and then for the project root click edit and then just click the uh, the dollar folder at the top and okay content center files edit select the content center files folder and then library edit and then select the libraries folder here and then okay on that may and we're almost done we're almost done right just select new create a new file just an ipt all right just click save straight off the bat and then underneath engineering data which is what it should default to select new folder and then just click let's call this test return to that and then just part one is fine save the file all right you want to click the little plus here enable vault 
Again, this is all just one-off stuff. Right click on part one, click check in, and then you should should confirm that it's gonna check this part into a test folder underneath engineering data, and it's gonna put the project file in at the same time. Click okay, and then mate, that's it. We're all done and dusted. Head back on over to the Vault Basic client, refresh that, and then now underneath engineering data, you should see the test folder with the part in there and you're now good to rock and roll mate that's it that's it all done and dusted and set up right though i think there was one more thing i said i was going to set up which was if you go to tools administration back into vault settings and then go to define working folder and then just enforce the project file and then just click that because it's just been checked in okay on that and okay on that and then that's it vault basic is installed it's set up and it's ready to rock and roll so a couple of things that you just need to be careful for in the future moving forward and that is just do not under any circumstances touch this vault data folder and then the same goes for the vault sql folder just make sure that this folder is never touched that's why it's sort of segregated by default it puts it underneath program files and then microsoft sql server puts it in here so it's kind of hidden away and you kind of you can you can easily forget that it's there when it comes to having a new pc if you know what i mean you get a new laptop you forget that you've got that vault folder that you need to it's like a memory jogger you need to back up your vault and move it across to the new PC. So with it being there, it's just a visual, it's just a visual trigger. And then absolutely finally, uh, just as a, I guess as a courtesy more than anything else, you don't have to do this, but it's very, very highly advisable that you do this. Uh, go to tools and backup, and then always, always, always back up your vault on a regular basis. You can use a script to automatically do this. If you search the Autodesk forums, there's plenty of people with the automated pre-made scripts that'll do this for you. But um, just click okay, validate the backup files you don't need to back up the content center libraries click ok uh, and that's going to back your vault up once it's backed it up take the finished backup and then move it off your computer put it onto an external hard disk move it onto a server just take it off your computer and that'll be this folder here uh, it's it'll be small in the first instance it's you know, on day one it's absolutely tiny but this will grow in time uh, and just, just do that on a regular basis every day if you can remember it on or every week so it mate you can close the vault server down you probably won't need to go into that ever again really uh, you want to make users in the future you can make users in the vault basic client just go into global settings and then you've got the manage users button there and uh, you can create additional users via that mate there you go that's how to install and set up vault basic 2020 from start through to finish and uh, done the best practice. So thank you very much for that. If you thought that was useful and you want to see more Vault stuff, mate, get subscribed to the channel. Tons of people watch this stuff and they don't subscribe and you'll miss out on tons of useful Inventor and Vault stuff moving on into the future. So yeah, do get subscribed if you want to see more stuff like that. Press the like button if you found it useful. It lets other people know that the video is decent and it lets me know that you're digging the vids. So thanks and I'll see you in the next one, mate. Toodles.